Okay. So let's play with something here for a second. Let me add a main.go, add package main, add function main. And let's say that I wanted to play with a particular dependency. I'm going to pick this one, which is the onlabs conf package. We're going to be using this package eventually to handle configuration. But let's say I want to use this package right now. How do I get this package into the project and into the module system and into Go Please so it can start giving me information about it? So this is essentially what I'm going to do. In the import section, I'm going to add the module that I want. Think of a repository as a module of code. That module of code can have one to many packages. And all the code in that module is versioned together. And so when we do an import statement, we're actually importing a particular package from a given module. In this case, this module is just a package. It's both. It's just a package right, in itself because all the source code is at the root. So it's both a module. It's in this repo. It's versioned. And it's also just a package because it just has everything right here. So on the import side, I can just list the name of the module, and it's also representing the name of the package that I want to import. Now, here's a problem. If I hit save, my tooling just made everything disappear <laughs> because I'm not using it. And so you kind of got a chicken and the egg problem. I need this listed here in order to use it, but if I hit save, it's going to go away. Now, some people, what they might do is use the go get tooling to bring it in. So then it's already kind of in. But this is how I do it. It just works really nicely. I'll bring in that import that I want. And then I'll pretend that there's a new function. And once I write conf.new, the editor doesn't make it disappear because I'm using it. However, I still got squiggly lines here because it's saying, dude, I don't know nothing. I don't know anything about this package. Like, I don't know nothing. I, I don't even know if this is, I got no IntelliSense. I got nothing. And that's because it's not listed in the module file yet. So this is what I do. I add the import. I write package name dot new. Then I come over to the terminal, always trying to work out of the root. And I'll just do a go mod tidy. What I love about go mod tidy is that it's going to go out there and run the minimal version selection algorithms and make sure that your mod file is tidy, that it just has what needs to be in there and the versions that we need. We're going to talk about minimal version selection before we're done. But this is why I like using go mod tidy versus go get here. So look at the output. Finding module for package comp, downloading version 1.5, found that, and then, um, and then it found another dependency called go compare that I brought down. And if I go over to my module cache now, and I go into the mod file, you see github.com, you see Arden Labs, and there's conf, and there's the source code. So this is the source code that I'm going to be building against. This code right here in the, mod, in the module cache when I start using it in my project. This is it. And you can see how a folder is created at a version. And that way, if we have different versions, we make sure we can go to the right folder. OK. But now what's also awesome, after running go mod tidy, is I got no more squiggly lines here. In fact, I've got package documentation. And now this is 
finally telling me from an IntelliSense perspective that this function doesn't exist, these are your options sort of right here. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's how I bring in new dependencies most of the time. Now, if we go to the go.mod file, we now see that a require statement has been placed. And we can see that we're saying that this project now requires conf at version 150. And we know that the source code is there. So go please is cache this. Our editor's looking, our, our go tooling will be looking at it from here and everything's gonna just work. Now there's another file that got created the moment we ran go mod tidy. This is go sum. This file is very, very important. And you have to make sure that you are committing both the mod and the sum file always. The sum file is giving us the protections that we need to make sure that we're always using the same code over and over again. I wanna walk through that with you now. I wanna actually walk through what happened when I ran go mod tidy. For the full course, visit courses.ardenlabs.com.